Good afternoon, everyone. How many of us have heard of Nina Simone? Show of hands, how many of us heard of Nina Simone? I mean, that's a lot more than I was expecting. One of my favorite songs of all time is Nina, Nina Simone's For a Woman. It goes a little bit like this. Can we get the song to play? So the song is about four women of different characteristics and different traits, but they're all bound together by the fact that they belong to the African-American African race. Today, I will share similar stories with you about different girls who are bound together by their quest to acquire education. But before I share their stories, I'll tell you a little bit about me. Um, I am Elizabeth Akuyanyako Patterson, and as you probably know, I'm the founder and executive director of the Girls' Education Initiative of Ghana, GEIG. I have a bachelor's degree in political science and business management, and I have a master's in, in nonprofit management, but those are just little snippets about who I am. It doesn't really capture the full story of me. But, um, Here, here are some slides showing how I had a really good upbringing. Here's a picture of me from when I was young. I'm standing with a dog. And I don't even know why I'm standing with a dog, because I'm a cat person. And here's a picture of me wearing a bomber jacket. I don't know why I'm wearing a bomber jacket in this Ghanaian heat. <laughs> I really don't know why. I think my aunt from the UK or Holland brought it for me. And it was so insistent that I wear that jacket. The first story that I will tell you, I grew up in Ghana, and in 1995, my family immigrated to the United States. And in 2003, unfortunately, as a junior in high school, I was in a car accident. I was on an academic scholarship, and I had just taken, had just taken the SAT exam for college, and had just recently learned how to drive. But unfortunately, in 2003, everything came to a halt. On April 4th, 2003, everything came to a halt, and my journey just changed. And from the accident, I acquired a new identity as a disabled person. The prefix of disability is dis, meaning without or not being able. And the way I see myself is that I have different abilities. While others, after the accident, saw me with my physical limitations, I happened to see my different abilities. And for 12 years and eight days now, I have led an independent, one-handed independent life. And through education and prayers and family support, I stand before you here today. I was pronounced... <laughs> On April 4th, 2003, I was pronounced dead to my family. And my mom's sitting there right now, and I'm sure she's very proud. Um, I was pronounced... <laughs> I was pronounced dead to my family, friends, and everyone who was hopeful that my dream of becoming, growing up and becoming a journalist would come true. But then the unfortunate happened. Everything just shut down. But I decided not to give up. Um, slowly but surely, I graduated from high school from the hospital bed. And then recently, as I mentioned, in 2014, from a master's program. And drawing on my personal experience, and the stories of some of the girls who I'll share with you today, I came to found the Girls' Education Initiative of Ghana, GIG. The first story that I'll share with you is that of Lungli, a girl who I met while studying abroad in South Africa. Lungli was a very lively little girl, and as soon as I entered the Renewed Sweet School, special school where she attended, she grabbed my hand and held on very close and wouldn't let go. I later on learned that she was tongue-tied at birth, and because of financial reasons, her family was unable to have the proper therapies for her and cater for her needs. As an Af African girl, invariably, Lungli's gender limits her, her access to education. She's doubly limited because of her different ability. I tend to want to describe my disability in reference to different abilities because I feel as though you have a different ability, I have a different ability, and it is through that lens that I see myself. 
and these girls that I'll share their stories. So I met Longley and we toured the school and later on I learned that because of her being tongue-tied and her family's financial situation, she wasn't able to pursue school and go to school as she had hoped. Um, leaving, leaving South Africa was really profound for me. I returned to New York and with the help of a classmate, we held a fundraiser that raised over $3,000 to support Lungley and other students like, like herself. The next story that I'll share with you is that of Priscilla. I met Priscilla when I first came to Ghana after being away for about 10 years or so while volunteering at the Worldlings Academy in Kumase. Priscilla, like Lungley, gravitated towards me and she was an eager learner but hesitant to participate in class. And through individualized support that I had given her, by the time that I was leaving Kumasi and Ghana in 2007, Priscilla had learned how to read. And on a recent visit to Warlings Academy, I learned that Priscilla is now in her third year of senior high school, about to pursue higher education. And to just backtrack a little bit, Priscilla's family thought that she was possessed by the devil because she had been left back twice. She was 10 years old and in class three, and we know that at 10 years old, she should have been in class five. So her mom was going to church, praying and praying and hoping and wishing that someday the devil would be casted out of her so she could pursue school and higher education. But this is, um, through, through, my, my, through my remedial sessions with her and my individualized tutoring, I learned that maybe Priscilla just needed that one-on-one -on -one attention. Kids who are, who are steeped in poverty and also have a special need or a disability are doubly limited because of economic reasons. Um, research says that four out of every five students with a disability live in the global south and live in sub-Saharan Africa. The next story that I'll share with you is that of I need to pause for a second because for some reason my PowerPoint is not showing. The next story that I'll share with you is that of Hannah and Inshra. Hannah and Inshra are two girls that we have in GIG. They are, they are exemplary of what GIG's, GIG's mission is all about. GIG seeks to advocate for girls' education and also include, provide inclusive education for kids with special needs, as mentioned earlier. Hannah was once a home, homeless teen selling oranges to support her life and her education. And Shira, just about a year and a half ago, lost her father, and as a result, is unable, her family is unable to maintain, maintain her in school. Because of GIG, these two girls are now in school every day. Upon meeting each other last year at our vacation classes session, they shared their stories with each other, and with the help of the Ampangsan family, Hannah was able to be homeschooled and get preparation to go to a mainstream school. And I'm proud to say that now Hannah is in school every single day. And because of GIG's help, Inshra is also in school each and every single day, and she doesn't have to worry about that. <laughs> GIG offers year-round academic support for our 13 girls. We currently have 13 girls in the greater Accra region and the Ashanti region. We have seven in Kumasi and six in Accra. We have Saturday classes for them, cultural and enrichment programs such as campus tours, debate and reading and drama clubs that they, they benefit from all the time. And recently we launched our leadership development and our mentoring program, which has paired all, our, all of our 13 girls with mentors. And I see some of you here today, Rita and Jifa, thank you so much for be, becoming mentors for our girls. I see some of you here today, and with these, sustain, with these relationships, the girls will be able to sustain academic and professional excellence as they pursue higher education. We hope to introduce our public ser service program in about a year or so, and our public service program will combine sustainable academic and service learning projects for our students, as, as well as public ser service and internships for them. What is the next chapter of GIG? GIG, the next chapter for GIG is to be more global. Global is a term coined by a friend of mine, a classmate from NYU. 
basically global, local is combining the global and the local efforts that we all have. GIG is very privileged to have partners abroad, mainly in the US, and now we're working on some in the UK and here in Ghana. Um, our partners inform our programming and everything that we do to help our, our girls. And it is because of them that our girls are striving and doing well in school. So we hope that with your support and all the efforts that you've pulled together for us, we hope to be able to welcome a new class in 2017. We will be bringing a class every three years as these girls are going off to senior high school. We'll be bringing a new class of junior high school students. And this will afford us time to actually collect data and study what's working for our students and so we could replicate and make more impact in the future. Thank you very much.